Welcome to the messy garage. We, uh, we're jammed in here. Got the Rover inside the garage on a 20 some degree day. And it was nine last night. So um, here's the project. We got a uh, 2012 supercharged Rover, Range Rover with a, um, with a dilemma. I just bought it and I have to get rid of the, the previous owner had put on a, um, an air suspension delete kit. So basically they got rid of the airbags, put on coil springs. Um, I bought the car because I want to tow my boat and these don't help. I want the, I want the ability to be able to have the system self level and automatically adjust when I connect the boat. Um, it's much better for that type of purpose. Cool. Nothing wrong with coil springs, um, for just general driving, stuff like that. But you connect the load to the back end and, and it sagged down pretty bad. I tried it one day. So the dilemma that I've run into since just buying this is not only do I have to get rid of these, uh, are not coil springs, uh, and their delete module that they put in, I'll unwire that splice, uh, inside by the air suspension control module in the trunk. Um, but that I have ripped CV boots. So I wanted to show you guys one of the dilemmas. It appears by having these coil springs on the car when you jack the rear up. I just got tires on it when I just purchased the car. And then I noticed all this stuff when I was changing brake pads, trying to get it inspected. It didn't work out well. And I, I look underneath and I've got ripped boots and I got a grease all over the place under the rim from just bringing it back 12 miles from the... Uh, tire play so anyway i'll show you why because when you look at these um coil springs we have a lot of pressure going downward on the lower control arm so if you look under here look at that ripped open cv let me see if i yeah that's a good view and you see that gaping opening so it's such an extreme downward motion on that axle that uh, it just rips that boot. So there's 92,000 miles on the car. And obviously this was a lot of pressure on it. So I'm rebooting it. Now, these axles um, are in great shape. There's no no noise. Um, everything seems smooth with, um, with the driving and the ball joints and all that they have on this seem good. Most of these are bushings. Um, but, so I went ahead and uh, figured, you know what? I'm going to put the um, Range Rover boots on since I can't find a nice aftermarket axle uh, to just switch it out with. Most of the time we just do that. Most of the time we don't bother rebooting. It's a very messy job. I'll try to walk you through that. I've done one side already, so I've got a little learning curve to help me out. And while I'm at it on this job, I've noticed from doing the other side that I have bushings that are worn. I have these upper bushings on a knuckle that are worn. Wait, there's a good view of it. And so I bought new top and bottom bushings. The one down here, I'm going to press that out and I'll show you a quick little video of that. And I'm going to go ahead and change out these struts. These are the electronic struts. Uh, this is part of the assembly back here, that round area. Let's see if I get a good shot of that. Rebalance. There we go. You can see this round area right here. That's part of the electronics of that. Uh, I also had another problem with a sheared off speed sensor bolt that is back here. Here's I cut the speed sensor wire already, but there was a sheared off bolt right there. If you can see in there, let me see if I got a good deal. That's a little overexposed. Anyway, maybe there. Maybe right there. Anyway. So I had to drill those out. So I have to drill that one out too. I drilled out the other side already. Uh, I've prepped the job. Um, already already have the brakes off, parking brake assembly off. Um, and I have this the, um, the height adjustment arms. I have them out of the way. I just put a tie wrap around that. So um, it gets it out of the way. It's, this is all plastic. Be careful with this. Um, and I have to recalibrate a lot of stuff, get a new alignment when this is all done. But and the bushings seem good on the other side for the upper arm in the back and even the lower arm. Um, so we'll see what this side has when I take all this stuff apart and uh, get this knuckle off of here and press those bearings in. So, all right, so I'll try to position the camera good for you guys 
and um, put this in a little wider field of view for some of these pieces to take off here. And then we'll press out those uh, bearings on the uh, knuckle and we'll get into that, into the reboot. Okay, we're getting ready to do the lower bolt on the strut. So I've already done the uh, three bolts or nuts up top in the trunk um, on the strut. And I can show you that in a little while. It's kind of tough if you have the um, power pulled on your battery, you need to strategically connect it <laughs> once in a while because the trunk release is all electronic. And I don't want to leave mine fully open because I somebody might screw up and hit the garage door and it might nail it going up. So um, anyway, so I've already released the last of the bolts up into the tops loose. And I'm going to do these bottom twos. These are 21 millimeter um, nuts on this. It's a long one. So obviously you'll need a couple of sockets. Not many people have combo wrenches that go all the way to 21. Most kits don't go that high. So make sure you have yourself an extra set of um, sockets. So I have a deep well on this one just because that's another one. I have a shorty on the other side with a half inch drive. And this is a, a nice long, you know, breaker ratchet bar that I have. It's um, This one's made by Cobalt which is probably soon to be, you know, lesser found now that Lowe's is selling Craftsman, but I'm sure there's other brands that would sell something like this. It's very handy, especially for lug nuts. Um, anyway, so yeah, let's see how hard this one is to come off. It shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so it's broke. Okay, so let me spend some time taking this, this nut off. And then uh, we'll pull that strut out. Okay, got this one close. Let's get this rod out. And I have this jacked up just a bit. Um, let's see how much I have to lower it. You can see how long. Let's just show you. See how long that that bolt is. Keep everything together. Did you take things apart? Uh, let's see. I got some grease on this thing, so I'm like, here we go. It's not too bad. Just kind of finagle it out of there. And let's see, you can see this one strut. And this is the uh, electronic version. Uh, what do they call this? V variable dampening system, VDS, I think they call it. So um, the electronics, um, by the way, connect right here in the trunk. Just a straight in plug, there's two pins on that. Just wanted to show you real quick, look at the grease that spewed out on that thing. That's just on this. The inside of the whole wheel well is covered. The back side of this was completely covered on the knuckle, just from a 12 mile ride. Shows how quick it can go out. I got a light put up here. This is just one of those magnetic lights from Eastwood with a nice goose neck arm. You'll find us old guys, we always need more light. You might even see me wear my new, uh, let me see this, Light Bar Pro, I think they call it. Really cool unit, love using it. Outside in the shed, hunting things down <laughs> underneath cars, <laughs> comes in handy. Anyway, I'm not gonna be an advertisement for products, but some, some of the nice tricks I like to use. All right, so um, this is for the knuckle um, upper bolt. Let's loosen this. I don't have much swing. I might have to put on something shorter here. There we go. I'm gonna let's try to reverse it. Let's see if this works better. Move the nuts over there. Get some leverage over here. There we go. Switch this around. That would help. And I got some torque on that one. Let's go back over here. Yep, as hard as we can. There we go. 
you gotta go low. Is that going the wrong way? Yeah, it's going the wrong way. On this side. We gotta go up. Okay, we'll start all over. Here we are on the upper no upper knuckle bolt. I'm gonna take this thing loose. Again, 21 millimeters, just like the other side. Let's see it going up. Switch this to get down. There we go. It'll help when I go. It helps better when I go in the right direction. that loose. No need to take that off right now. Let's get this bottom one undone. Maybe this breaker bar will work on this side. Hold it. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Let's try We should use a long one over here. Yep. So, a little switcheroo. Let's do that. These 22s, yes. Look at that. I knew there was a reason I had the 22s out here from the other side. 22 millimeter on the bottom. 21's on the top. Okay, so my other 22 is here. And let's see if I can get that on. And this is the other reason why you had to do the strut butts, the strut nuts first. Because with this VD Essex, um, that piece I was showing you where the electronics are, it's in the way of getting your wrenches on unless you have the pleasure of having a lift and you get underneath. <clears throat> yeah, it's on there. All right. And I'll rattle off those torques when we, uh, when we get to putting this back on. I'll pull the manual out. I'll tell you what those are. Okay. So when we pull this one out, we're gonna flip this. And we've already got the main drive nut loose. Don't forget to do that in the beginning while you have all this nice leverage to uh, put your torque on. You have to unping your nut that's on here. Just um unping it back because they lock it with a little ping on there you'll see they indent it and then you get it loose so let's pull this bolt out and then we're going to work on we're going to get our our um, hammer air hammer out and you know our hammer drill but we'll put it in air hammer mode you know and um and we'll put our chisel bit on the front our point bit our shine our point bit and then uh, we'll work the axle inward and then we'll be able to flip this up um, I have the cross arm there's another cross arm up here I don't know what you would call this because it's not really a, you know it's not really a control arm because there's no real adjustment on it but maybe on the nut in the very back it has a lot of spring power on it I can't pull this out right now so I'm gonna loosen this bottom up before 
I work this out. I just have the nut off of it. It's just sitting there. So let's get this nut off the bottom. out we'll see how tight it is because I do have some upward pressure with the jack I'll undo that and um, we'll get this out okay punch stick in here. Yep, this is I thought. It's because of this, it's because of this damn spring. This leaf spring is nothing but trouble for me. So, that was the bolt flying away. And now I'll jack this up so I can get my, my punch out. Because, as I forgot to tell you, there's a lot of upward pressure on, on both the upper and lower knuckle bushings. They want to spring up. So, all right, that part's out. Now I'll go get the uh, air hammer set up and we'll push this axle inward and we'll beat that off eventually. We're getting close. So now I still have it connected to this other arm, but this is a lot more wobblier and I can pull this piece out. Come on. There you go. And this is the other arm I was telling you, but I don't want to grab the camera for a little, little grease here, but anyway, I guess you can't see it. It's blocking by the other upper arm. Maybe I'll grab the tripod, see if that works. There you go. Now you can see this upper arm here with that bolt on it, goes through that side. And this has a lot of spring power on it, on its bushing in the back. Okay, wait a minute, I got the camera turned wrong. There we go. That's better, this piece here. Okay, so now we'll get the air hammer set up and start pressuring on that nut right there. Okay, so we're back. This is what I was telling you about earlier with the uh, the nut on this axle. This section right here was pinged downward into that groove section. Same with on this side, you see that cutaway. So you just kind of get in here with a punch and beat it out a little bit so that you put your, oh God, what is this thing called? Axle nut, this is a 30, six millimeter axle nut that fits that nut just right okay half inch drive i bought a set of those then instead of just buying the one and the ones in the rental kits didn't have a 36 so yep sometimes we gotta go buy it so all right so here we are we got our bauer rotary hammer in set up and I'll try to give you a good view of this. Got a pointy bit. Put it inside here. Okay, take our nut. Would help to take the nut off. Huh? Here, let's get our socket. And see, we got some slot from having the bottom side, right? Okay, nuts out. 
sockets away. I should spray some PB blaster in here. Should have done that earlier. We'll see if it cooperates. Of course, since we're filming this, it's not gonna cooperate. But let's give it a shot. Gotta hold the bottom. And if I have to, I'll reconnect it. I'll jack up that bottom and reconnect it. But let's just try it holding it for now. friends are gonna kill me because that went in so easy because I've helped them do theirs and they don't always cooperate so <laughs> it's a nice easy way to uh, to do that so now drive shafts disconnected obviously we can flip this up I'll disconnect these two bolts up top and we can get our knuckle off yay and then we'll uh, work on those bushings on the knuckle then after that We'll work on getting rid of that leaf spring out of there. Not leaf spring, good lord, coil spring. We'll get rid of that R not coil spring, and uh, and then reboot the axle, of course. I'll show you how I take that off, and then uh, eventually, if everything's good and I don't have to order parts, we'll put the air suspension on and get that going. Okay. I don't have to beat out this bolt. Get it out. Oh. Catch the knuckle. Okay. On the ground. See the bolt and the washer. This is the one with the uh, the adjuster for the uh, and it goes on one way the way they shape the bolt in this washer for alignments did i have that right yeah like that and so uh that's how that goes on keep all that together with the nut okay and there's our axle of course we'll work on getting that off and our knuckle we'll clean this up and then we'll start pressing those bushings out remember me uh telling you about this sheared off it's kind of weird how it happened on both sides i don't know if it's related or not you see how the head of the bolt was sheared off here if i pull this up give you better light there and you see this piece of metal knocked off the bottom something violent happened there and it's the same on both sides so it's on the side of the strut over here i don't know I don't know what could have hit that there at that angle unless maybe when they were putting this system on, maybe the, the arm or, or it was hitting some other object. I don't know. Um, I have new speed sensors, obviously, because I saw this busted. So I ordered them. So I got to beat this out because they don't cooperate. So I'll just try it with this one to see if this will. Okay, so speed sensor out. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine trying to pull on this till that cooperated. Obviously, having the whole knuckle off made that easier, but it's a much bigger job taking the knuckle off, and I'll have to uh, clean that whole good. And um, anyway, that's. It's just another mystery. So I have new cap screws that I have that I'll put on that. And I think they were six millimeter. I'll have to check that size if you need to know that because I couldn't find that anywhere in the manual. I couldn't find anything telling me that size. So, okay, on to clean it up. 
this is what we're going to use to press out um, both top and, and bottom bushings on the uh, knuckle. So I can't, you can't, well at least I couldn't find a rental kit that had the variety that I need to get a precise push on these um, bushings without ruining the new rubber. I don't care about the old, we can push out through the rubber on the old, but on the new is very critical to not ruin the rubber. So you get a kit like this. Now, I know this was an Amazon purchase, but it doesn't have, of course, a brand on here. I'm sure it's from China. And, um, but I can give you the link below um, to this kit. And it has obviously these push rods. All of these have bearing, bearing washers on both sides. And we're basically going to push on one side and hold it on the other and run it through. So you, it's kind of like a shell game in New York City. I mean, you have all these different sizes and they have them labeled in here. Um, obviously I got metric and um, they're labeled in millimeters and they tell you like, you know, that's 78 millimeter. And the one below it is a 59, 58. And they're grooved. Um, and then so, you know, obviously here's your inset for your bearing washer to set in real nice. And I'll set it up and I'll show you how it works. And uh, for this size, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the sizes I use so it might help you uh, when you're shopping for a kit to make sure you have the, the specific sizes. So, okay, let's set it up. Okay, let's try to go over some sizes that we're gonna use. <clears throat> now we're on the top side here. This is the top part of the knuckle. And you can see that we have a flange. Let me point with the screwdriver right there. It's kind of hard. It'll be a lot easier when you see a new one go on. I can show you the other side. So that piece is really what you want to push on um, when you're installing it. You see, we don't have that over here. So we're going to want to remove this this way. Okay, from this side to this side. Um, the flange is our stopper when we're installing it. Okay, so let's talk about demo first. For demo, as we go this way, we're gonna, I don't have a size that grabs this flange right here and, and goes inside of the actual hole here, the opening. You see that opening right there? I'll scratch it. Maybe that helps. So I don't have one that is exactly grabbing right there and still makes it through. So I'll use a smaller one and I will push, I wish I had one that just fit right here on the actual bearing collar, but I don't have one that small in this kit. So I'm gonna actually just push on this. It'll push the rubber too, okay? And this'll be the demo one. So what'll happen is on this side, I need to have a larger one that's larger than this collar. I want it to rest on this metal and have this have the ability to come out towards me. So I'm gonna use a 60 on this side like that, okay? And you can see the size right there. Okay, wait a minute, overexposed. Uh, too much light, too much light. Anyway, trust me, that's a 60. <laughs> okay. So you feed this through, just gonna simulate this. Okay, I'll set it up again, I'll save some time because you gotta run these nuts. So obviously there's our 60 on this side. Okay, not there. And on this side, I'm gonna use this 48. Now, when I'm ready to press the new one in, I'm gonna use a 52. Um, a 52 will put it there, but it's going to, it's going, a 52 is gonna be on, on this side. A 52 fits this, this collar just right, this flange, and it will push it in until it stops um, on this side, and then you're golden. Okay, so that's for install. For now, we put the 60, so we're on top, and we're around it. We allow it to move this way, and we're going to put the smaller 44 right here. I'm going to bring the nut in, all the way in, hook up our wrenches, and we'll start tightening, okay? Um, so that is on this side. While we're talking sizes, let's go around here to the other side. So this is the lower side. 
So there's a snap, snap ring right here. All right, I'll knock that snap ring off, obviously, because it's not gonna move. It's sitting in a groove here, okay? And on this one, for, we obviously will need to move it, let's see. I think I'm gonna push on this side. And I use a 72 on one side, okay? And I push with a 60. Let's try a 60 on there. Yeah, that's perfect. 60 is fitting just right. Okay. So hopefully I don't have that backwards now that I'm thinking about it with the snap ring. I don't think so. I don't think it matters because you're pushing into the groove. Um, it does stop. It does stop. And the groove is right there where you want it when we push it in. So we'll fine tune that as we get to that that stage. So let's go, let's set up for the demo on the top side first. Okay, so I got it set up and it's good to have the slots facing you so you can see what's going on behind the scenes underneath. Um, 19 millimeter fits this, uh, the nut of the size of the rod and, and the pusher bearings that I've got. So I've got a long 19 on this side. I set it up so the nut is pretty into the rod excess rod is on the other side okay so that helps this out with travel and you can readjust if you have to i gave it a quick shot of pb blaster in the slot on this side and then i'll probably have to put my foot up here to hold this knuckle down because as i'm tightening it you'll see the rubber compress which is fine yep you see the knuckle wants to come up to me so some people do this while it's actually on the car i chose not to because I don't feel like bending over like that. And then once, once it gives way, it's starting to torque a little bit. You might hear it pop when it wants to move. And then once it starts moving, there we go. It gets real easy. Well, real easy is relative, right? Moving in, who cares about the rubber? You want to go through. Okay, get easier. Love it when the sound changes. Okay. Okay, looks like it's out. So obviously you gotta bring these out. Just one side. Do the easier one. Shorter length. Okay. And our destroyed bearing comes out. Okay. And you can see that it just makes it through. Obviously, there's rubber inside, giving it a little tightness. We can ping that out. But that's what the idea you want is for this bearing pusher, collar, whatever you want to call it, goes inside of this metal without destroying any of this. Obviously, very expensive. So, so 44 makes it in, but the problem you'll find on this particular car is you can't push a 44 on the new rubber you don't want to destroy it so you'll go on the outside and press it till it stops and until the metal actually the pusher side stops at the collar and it'll be just right okay so we'll get this out and then we'll do the other side okay so let's get our snap ring out on this side it's usually not too hard so we'll hook in. Okay. Uh -huh. There you go. You have a new snap ring with your new bearing on the other side. 
you need to get out of there too, huh? Yeah. Ah, had you. Let me just do this pointing away from you. This is a no, no emergency room operation. Come on. All right, now, maybe we grab it or something. Mm -hmm. Pliers are too far away. Let's try this one more time. Oh, you dog. All right, we'll go get some other tools. Okay. Maybe it's stuck in the bottom. Maybe that's half our problem. It's cemented in the bottom. some other magic. Maybe we can tap. Push it down a little bit. Okay. Feels like it's going out. Let's walk it. Hmm. Pinkies. Watch your pinkies. There we go, little rat bastard. Can you go? Okay. So now you can see that this is the flange side, and this is the side that's going to go that way, isn't it? Let's see if I have that right. This looks a lot bigger over here. Let me give it a little squirt. Let me get it better. Better read on this. Yeah. Okay. So that's our flange side. This side's gonna go that way through there. Try not to squirt you. All right. So let's set it up. What do we say for this one? We said. I used a 60 and a 72. Yeah, so we would use a 60. Grabs that. But you know something? That doesn't look like it's going to go through. I think I need a smaller size. Maybe I have my numbers a little bit big here. Let's try a 58. This was the 72. This will go the outside. Hmm. Let me play around with these for a minute. What we've decided to do for the push, this is the snap ring side, okay? Uh, which is the side of the strut, where the strut mounts over here on these two bolts. So I'm going to use a 54 to start. And obviously we'll correct that if we need to. And I'm going to push in that way. 54 looks like it'll clear on this diameter right here and go through. Okay, so I'm going to try that on the push side. And on the receiving side, I'm going to use a... I think I'm going to go with the 72. But what I'm realizing is I'm cockeyed because... We're hitting part of the shield down here. The dust shield is uh, in the way of getting it squarely on this outside flange. So I'm going to take the dust shield, push it down, give me the room, and then we'll start pushing it through. Okay, just for these dust caps real quick. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a couple of these T30s, one here, one on the other side, and you have a couple of... 13 millimeters here. Give them a couple 
squirts of love there. And let's see if this one cooperates. I put a have one of these uh, flex quarter inch pieces here. I'm going to use the um, ratchet, quarter ratchet. What I was finding out, you see how close the head is to the top of the uh, bearing here. So, really not a lot of play. So, what it does is you can at least break it loose. It's not hard once you get through all the crud. Watch it not come out at all. There you go. Once you break it loose, what happens is this bottoms out. <laughs> the bottom of the bearing is sitting here searching around for a Torx right angle set, which I don't have. And then I'll just use that and kind of pressure it out. And now for these two 13s on this side. out you can pull the dust shield off that okay now we have this clearance gone on the shield you see how nice that that's a 72 fits on there so that'll be our receiving side it'll push this way okay let's set up the rods okay we're back so we're set up we have a 72 on this side the receiving side and the pusher side, I have a 52. Okay, I'll swing it by the camera so you get a nice look at it. All right, and now let's start cranking it down. See how hard this side is. Okay, let me get my left foot that's half asleep up here. Switch. Go in. I'll slow it down a bit. There we go. See, I just don't want to do this reaching underneath the knuckle. It'd be pretty awkward for me. So, this is just a lot more accessible. It's easier. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll turn it. Let's grease over there. Okay. Okay. Take that out. And our bearing that we don't need. And then we'll tap this out. You see how it fit inside? And that was a 52 again. And what's this? I might put my foot on it. Let's see. Probably could have gone inside smaller. Made it easier. Hopefully I didn't damage that. that collar. I don't think I did. We'll clean this up. Hopefully it was just the rubber giving me issues. 
Yeah, that's all it was. So, okay. Good news. Now we're ready to install the new. So I probably said in the other clip I used a 52 on the push side. I'm going to push this direction. And a 52 kind of works. It grabs it. It's obviously not going to go inside the hole. Either with this one. I'm not counting on that. I just want to get it flush. But I'm liking the size of this 50. Fits nice and easy right over the rubber here. And it's not pinching the rubber at all. So I'm going to go with a 50 on the push side. And a 60 back here on this side. So let's see. This will go probably like this. 60 on that side. Bearing. Doesn't matter direction on this one. Looking this way. I ran just a smidgen of, I used hydraulic oil. Um, just ran a little bit around it. Maybe I'll put another drop or so. If I do this one handed. Just ran a little bit around it. I don't have to go crazy. Probably, <laughs> I don't know if it's recommended to do that or not. But we will see if it makes a difference. Let's see. It's kind of tough to do this one handed. Okay, so you obviously want to get it as centered as you can and square. We're getting close. You just take your time and align it real good. Make sure this one's looking good. Yeah, I like that. I like that feel, the alignment. Maybe I'll bring this one up a little hair. There, get our slots in so we can see it. Okay, we're on the metal good on that one. All right, I like it. Let's cinch it down. Put that on tight. So I have a 60 on this side and a 50 on the push side. This is the small of the two bearings, of the bushings. I keep calling bearings. Every time I say bearing, I'm, I apologize, I'm wrong. Okay, get our other 19. This one's going to be loosened on this side. And this will be tightened on this side. Okay. Let's see if we can turn it towards you a little bit. So you can see it. Let's see how easy that goes in. I only need to put my foot on it. I like butter. this up okay done ain't that pretty all done guess it pushed a little bit of rust out the other side the thing On its journey. Okay. There's one. And almost done. Now we have this bit. So we have this side. Alright. Let me get my parts lined up and we'll get going with this one. Okay. So here we are on the lower bushing. So this side has a pretty healthy size flange on one side to push on which is terrific and then you can see the groove right there that's for our new snap ring it'll go in that side these are Delphi's by the way 
this says, there's the part number on it. So you can read that. Let me turn it. How's that? So, um, yeah, I went ahead and did, spent a few extra dollars to put these on. So what I like on this one is a 60. Fits nice and tight there. Doesn't bother the rubber. And it doesn't need to go through because this one's going to stop on the flange. And I'm putting a 70 on the back side. Okay, so it'll go into that. Snap ring on the side of the caliper bolts. Okay, that's where I looked at it on the other one. Um, so we're just going with the same methodology because I guess I could review the video to see which side I pulled it off on. Maybe I'll do that real quick to double check. Okay. So I looked at a video and I was correct. The snap rings on this side of these bolts and in the previous video I called them um, strut bolts. Those are not, they're for the caliper. Um, strut bolts are way over here on the lower part of the lower trailing arm. So if I listen to what I say, <laughs> it might help. All right, so I'm gonna have this and tighten on this side. This and loosen on this side. And again, these are 19s. And I've got it lined up. Move it. Now I'm right, okay, there we go. So I'll turn this towards you, make the view a little easier. Let's see how hard this one will be. Not bad. I'm going to put my foot on there, but I think there's stability. tougher than the other side, but not a big deal. Okay, I'm getting close to flush. Don't want to overdo it. Yep, that looks good. Don't want to strip anything. Flip these around. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. One press bearing. Bushing, <laughs> I called it a bearing again. And maybe I'll spray that groove out real quick and uh, use some electric spray. I'll clean it out. A lot of power on that. Good. Run this through the groove. Okay, now we'll put the snap ring on it. Let's see if we need these. Remember the first one being kind of easy. Really close together. I might need to press it a little bit more. Doesn't seem like it wants to go in there, does it? Let's 
see if that even that thickness will go in there. Can we get these wide enough to separate it? How do I get this first one to go in? I don't remember it being this big of a deal. But I do think from looking at this view that I need to get it pushed a little bit more. But I see a little bit of gap here, but not much. Just a hair. Maybe I'll set it up, give it one more squeeze. All right, that was a pain in the neck, but I'm sure there's a better tool than what I had because there's no holes to grab it like a regular snap ring. So I just used a set of these pliers to kind of spread it out. You know, once I got one side in the groove and held it down, and got it wide enough, then I could get these to grab the width, make it wider, get the bottom in the groove, and then uh, rest it in. So it's in there, floats around. So, and I did need to press again on this one more time. So that one's done. So the next thing to do is to get this sheared off bolt. This was the uh, speed sensor bolt. So we're gonna drill that out, remove the rest of that stud, and get that ready. Okay. Hit it with a punch a couple times, got a little dent. Let's give that a whirl. Okay, let's see if that's enough. Nope, we have to go bigger. Switch bits, get a little bigger. That was a 16th. Let's go up to, what is that, 564? I think that's what I used on the other one too. Okay, that'll do it. Let's put our holder in. And the TS not even in there that tight. Exactly, get my hole straight, did I? Well, it does it. Okay, it's out of there. That part's done. We'll clean all these shavings up. Find the drill bit that just fell on the floor. <laughs> and the extractor holder. What else are we left on the floor? Okay. And then we'll get cleaned up. And then we'll uh, remove the axle. sneak under here with the camera there aren't many good views I can give you of this so we're underneath we're gonna put our slide hammer on the back side here and give us a few wax and hope it cooperates I was gonna get my arms out of your way so this doesn't fit perfectly because this is this this grabber this is for like a VW so it's nowhere near the size that this one is, that this beast is. But it does it, it gets the job done. So I'm gonna slide hammer backwards. Gotta be careful to miss 
the height adjustment. I got the axle tied up. Maybe I can show you this. I don't know if this comes through. I pulled the axle up and tied it up to the upper control arm so it's kind of straight. Okay. Now let's give this some wax. See how many it takes to loosen this up. Try for this side. This is about 10 on the other side. Maybe I can rotate it. Let's be careful. Okay, we'll mess our mess up that precious seal there. Because I'm not planning to replace that seal. Okay, so I gotta take my hanger apart up here. Just tie wrap this heavy duty wrap a string, whatever gear rack whatever they call that thing okay going straight out and we had already drained our differential there we go these aren't light are they okay it's safely on the ground so here's our seal appears to be good nothing too stiff it didn't leak so I'm gonna leave it <laughs> clean it out and I'll put some seal grease on that before I reinstall it and uh, obviously the drains under here under the diff and um, just don't forget to fill it back up with the right stuff I bought the uh, was it GL5 from the Range Rover dealer probably got ripped off the castrol that they recommend is no longer made, of course. So I settled on the diff fluid that they sell at the dealership. 